have to think that that didn't go how you wanted it to go in game one. When you think about uh, you know the things that concerned you most that you wanted to work on the most when you got back, what were those things? Uh, definitely uh, not up to our standard at all. Uh, the things that I don't need to fix, kids played really hard, uh, really good effort out there. Uh, a few missed tackles that we need to clean up. Tackled pretty well for the game, but a few missed ones that cost cost us some yardage. Uh, a couple, couple uh, you know, missed assignments, mental errors, whatever. Uh, all levels of the defense throughout the game that cost us uh, some yardage once again. And those are the things that I have to clean up. Uh, that's on me to get fixed, and I, I will get those fixed. Uh, other things that are concerning is, you know, we take great pride on this unit at putting the fire out. Uh, when we get put in an unfavorable uh, situation, we fix it. That's life. That happens in football. It's nobody's fault. We need to fix it. We need to put out the fire, and we did not do that this week, and that's got to improve. So I think those are the things that we can we can get corrected going into this game. Caleb Tanner yesterday just kept saying, I take full responsibility for this. What goes through your head when you hear the leader talking like that? Yeah, I think that's great um, and, and bad. It's not his fault. Uh, no one play or no one player loses a game, right? Happens in all phases, happens offense, defense, special teams, happens with, you know, however many players are step on the field, however many coaches are out there. Everyone, everyone's got a, a part in that. Um, but I think, you know, Caleb sees himself as a leader. He's developed into a leader, so he took it extra hard. He wants to take responsibility. Um, and, and Caleb's done a great job in helping get this – uh, ship righted this week as far as practice is concerned and, and, and getting uh, you know our side of the ball you know back to, to where we need to be and then spreading that spreading that energy to the rest of the group um, once again I appreciate Caleb um, but it never falls on one player it falls on me ultimately do you, do you feel like this week you have to put more emphasis on tackling your shoes how do you handle that yeah I mean it's a, it's a hard uh, it's a hard thing to handle because you know it's a uh, you can't tackle and you can't recreate those open space tackles a lot, you know, in college football and practice, unless you're going to go tackle uh, the ones. And, you know, I think we'd all feel uh, terrible if one of our starting receivers, running backs, quarterback, whatever, got, got hurt during that. So we've got to do a great job uh, with drills, which, you know, I think we, we have some great drills. And uh, like I said, the tackling was pretty good, all but a couple open space ones. Uh, one, you know, one I can think of offhand, and there was a few. One got missed with wrong leverage. One got missed with right leverage, and, and we just didn't get there fast enough uh, with the rest of the posse. Uh, so we're, we're going to really break down the film and talk about technique and drill that technique without being able to get those hits live. Yeah, I think it's uh, you know it's always huge. I think you know hats off to Northwestern. It's a good football team. They had a good plan. You know they chipped the defensive ends a lot. They got the ball out of the kids' hands a lot. Um, so they had a good plan going in um, to take care of that four-man rush. Um, but it's 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 going to be huge for us to get that thing get that thing going. Um, you know, on defense, you also have to earn the right thrust passer. Right, you've got to get those people in third and sevens, third and eights, third and nine plus, you know, to earn the right to really pin your ears back and go. And we did that some, but we didn't do it enough. How did your defense play? Uh, you know, I thought they, they played they played pretty well. Um, you know, I thought Isaac Gifford uh, had a pretty good game. He had some some good solo tackles. Uh, he was pretty good in coverage. Chris did a nice job coming in uh, to spell him. And uh, Javen played well on special teams. All three of those guys played pretty well on special teams, I think. The, the absence of a splash play from them, that was something JoJo did. I don't yeah. How much do you have to get a play from one of those guys that just puts some five yards behind the line of scrimmage? Yeah, and I think that, you know, yeah, with JoJo, it was a little easier to call his number sometimes, right? Um, with a new guy, you know, maybe you do it. Maybe you don't put that, that heat on him right away. Uh, maybe we got to get him a little bit more involved. But with JoJo, you know, it was pretty easy to call his number. And, and you know, he's – he made a lot of things happen. He did. And sometimes it, it cost us. Sometimes he made a, a big play, but he made a lot of things happen. Um, and, and those guys will get there. The you got, uh, Drew and Wynn, some reps in the middle. What do you expect going forward with that, that defensive line rotation? And how did that affect, that affect you know, what, what appeared maybe like some fatigue at the end or against 80, 80 some plays? Yeah, I think, you know, um, once again, 
my issue a little bit. Um, you know, we had a good plan about how much to play guys. Now the game ended up going 85 snaps. Um, you know, without reviewing the film, you don't know exactly how those other guys played. Watching the film, they played very well. Um, so we need to probably rotate those guys in a little more, like you said, keep those other guys a little fresher. But I think that, you know, after watching them play a game, <coughs> excuse me, they've gained a lot of trust in the coaching staff uh, to go in and take more reps. Drew got, Drew got 24 snaps. Is that more than you would have expected going in? No, we planned, for, we planned about 20. Did you? Yep, 20 was about the plan. So he, showed, he must have showed a lot in August. Yeah, I mean, you know, just a few, sna- the few weeks he was there, he, he ended up playing really good football. And, you know, the, the – the thing about it is a D tackle, you know, they can line up and play, but he showed the ability to learn the, the different, you know, blitzes and, and movements and all those kind of things. So uh, we felt good about getting him, you know, 15 to 20 snaps. He ended up playing 24. Obviously, like Mitch said, we probably could have rotated those guys in a little more. And, and once again, that's that was that was the plan that I had going in. Um, if the game, if we'd have known the game would have went 85, it all comes down to then who do you put in for the extra snaps, and now we see what we can do. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys watch the game, you guys watch the film. Um, obviously, it looks it looks a little different when those guys aren't in there, and not not so much the level of play, but. Um, just how they can, <clears throat> the comfort level they have with the rest of the team and getting everybody lined up. And, you know, if the, if the awkward happens or the, the unusual happens, they don't flinch. But, you know, in this game, next guy has to be ready. And you have to prepare every single day like you're the next guy up. I heard Coach Rude talking about it today. If somebody goes down, if two guys go down, you better have prepared today like you're going to be the starter, whether you get zero snaps or whether you get 60. So our, our next guy's up got to be ready to roll. Yeah, I think I thought Nick Nick played uh, Nick played well all game. You know, I don't think I didn't see Nick miss any tackles. Uh, so I thought he was good. Yeah. Yeah, no, Chris has been uh, cross-training kind of the whole camp, so he's, uh, he's good to flip back and forth. This week, do you think we can see him play some reps if you need to rotate another guy in behind him? Yeah, I mean, you know, if we, if we need another guy, you know, he's, he's the next guy that we'd move in there. It's yep. never easy to play your first game, so Ernest Hausman's really thrown in the fire in that one moment, yep. kind of right after the onside kick. What lessons do you give him after the game about you've got a long career ahead and things are going to happen like that? No, you know, eh, <laughs> Once again, I don't care who's in the game. That wasn't up to our standard. But I also understand that we had a lot of new faces in there. Um, some untimely mistakes happened that, you know, you, you, you wish that you had a NFL preseason or you had, a, you know, another game to get those kinks worked out, but we didn't. And that we can't make that as an excuse. We knew we had a job to do. Uh, ultimately, we didn't get it done, but Ernest has a long very bright future ahead of him, and he's only going to grow and get better and better every week. With all the new faces, did, what did you see from Miles Farmer? It seemed, it seemed like he was doing a really good job of getting, getting guys lined up. Right? Yeah, I, I thought, you know, when Miles is out there, just like Nick and Luke, there's a level of comfort with everyone, you know, that he's going to alert people to things, he's going to make the checks, he's going to do all those kind of things. And, you know, and, and Miles, Miles is a – you know, quote unquote, he started some games last year. He started some games as a sophomore when we got some guys banged up. So he's had a lot of game experience. That wasn't like, oh man, here I am, first time out there. So I thought Miles operated very well. Were there any black shirts today? No, no new black shirts today. Yeah, uh, we'll have our hands full with North Dakota. That's a really good football team. Uh, they play extremely hard. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've played them before at uh, Northern Iowa, and I've seen just how they come in for, for a game like this. Uh, you know, we're going to see a lot of different stuff. You know, if you go back and watch Utah State from last year, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff coming at us. Uh, so the guy's got to be ready for that. They've got a quarterback that's a gamer. Um, you know, he just he has a knack of making plays. We've got a couple wide receivers back. Number four is a really good football player. 
a uh, couple good offensive linemen. I know they got a transfer junior college that we haven't seen on tape that they're talking highly about. So th there's a lot of good football players, a well-coached football team. Scheme-wise, they got a lot of different stuff going on in every different personnel grouping. So it's going to be a good football game, and it's going to be a good test for our defenders to get their eyes where they're supposed to be and get their job done. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think that was a, a situation where, you know, an unusual formation came out, um, and I'm not sure what happened. You know, it was a, but it was, a, it was a mistake. It got cleaned up. They ran the play again. It was over. It was very unfortunate that it happened, um, but the guys did not respond poorly at all. The guys helped the young guys that made made some mistakes out there. We got it cleaned up. Uh, the good thing is I didn't see panic. I didn't see um, guys going sideways. We, we stuck together, and, and that's why I still think we have a very good football team. I think we have a very good defense. I'm very confident we'll get things cleaned up, and we'll continue to get better and better every week. Anything else? Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks,